Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about creating users and managing their permissions. And in the roadmap, we are somewhere around here. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to install a web server. For that, we need to talk about package management so that we can install the web server package. And then we're going to talk about web servers in general and Nginx in specific. And we're going to install Nginx. To reiterate, first we're going to learn about package management and then we're going to learn about web servers and then we're going to install a simple web server which is nginx we'll configure nginx with advanced options in the next video so what is a package it's a way to distribute applications it may contain binaries configuration files documents etc basically it's just an application packaged into one file depending on the distro family there are two different extensions for packages in Linux. Red Hat uses .rpm and Debian uses .deb. So we will be mostly focusing on these Debian packages or deb packages. So where does it come from? Or when we install a package, where exactly does it come from? Let me show you where it comes from. So I have logged into my Debian server again. If you take a look at the file, etc apt sources.list here you can see there are a bunch of entries we're just going to look at this first one so here you can see that http deb.debian.org slash debian buster main buster is the version of this debian so this is where all the packages that we install come from for example if we go and take a look at this website so we have opened deb.debian.org slash debian and then we go into pool main let's take a look at this package called sl i'll show you what the package does in a moment so if i do control f for sl there we go we have this directory called sl here if i click on it you can see these dot deb files this is for different architectures and different versions so if we take a look at here we can see that sl 5.02 amd64 because we are using a 64-bit version of debian this is what's relevant to us this is it this is a package so how do i install this package well one way to do is you can just right click and copy the link let me create a directory called packages and i use wget to download a file if i take a look i have downloaded the package sl for 64-bit and debian now we can install this package using the tool dpkg to install this package you do sudo dpkg dash i which stands for install and then the package name let me enter the password and that's it it installed the package so if i do sl so yeah this is what the sl does it stands for steam locomotive i think well, it's a fun little command that brings up a locomotive if you mistype the command ls. So we installed the package using dpkg. Now to see all the packages that are installed in the system, you can use the same dpkg command dpkg-l or list. Now it's going to show all the packages installed. Now obviously that's going to be a lot of files. We just want to look at the package that we just installed. So we can use the grep to filter out. Now there are a lot of packages that contains the word SL. We can use this switch W and then SL. So what this is going to do is this is going to look for a word that, that is SL. Instead of matching it in anywhere in a word, it will match only if it's a full word. So now here you can see we have the package here. Now you can remove this package using dpkg itself sudo dpkg-rsl and if we look for it again it's gone so as i mentioned before these packages come from these repositories that we configure in the etc apt sources list sources dot list file and there is no magic involved it's just an http website where you can download the packages from but now 
Downloading these packages manually and installing them using dpkg does not sound to be the easiest way to do it. And it's not. There is a better way to do it. It's using package management tools such as apt. Now the first command that we need to be familiar with is apt-get update. I know most of you have seen this a lot. Whenever we want to install a new package we do this. It simply gets the latest information about what all packages are available in the whatever that we have specified here. So if we take a look at the man page, update is used to resynchronize the package index file. So you want to make sure that you run sudo apt-get update before you install any packages using apt. Okay, so we have downloaded the latest index. Now let's install the package sl, but this time using apt. sudo apt-get install sl and that's it it installed the package now let's try to install nginx i will talk about nginx in a moment but now let's just install it sudo apt-get install nginx so it installed nginx now to remove a package you use apt-get remove the package name now it's going to uninstall the package so we have two different options on removing packages one is apt-get remove which will remove only the binaries but it keeps the config files and another option is to use purge which removes everything but as i said before it does not remove all the dependencies that were installed along with nginx which you can see here and to get rid of them you can use auto remove to recap you can install packages using apt-get install and you can remove them using apt-get purge or apt-get remove so i made a little flowchart here and uh, this is how each of these things are connected together our sub goal here is to make a website right for that we need to set up a web server now nginx is a web server and when we talk about nginx we need to talk about services because nginx runs as a service and then when we talk about services we need to talk about starting stopping services enabling and disabling and things like that so we're going to start with web server so what is a web server it's a software that serves websites as simple as that for every website out there it needs to have a web server to serve those pages and the example of a web server would be apache nginx or iis which is a windows specific web server so for our use case we're going to talk about nginx we're going to work on nginx specifically we're not going to go into apache you should try to configure and work with apache on your own just to get an idea of how different it is from nginx but for this video series i will be focusing on nginx so nginx is a web server and by default nginx can serve only static documents or it can only serve static websites now comes the question of what is a static website what are other kinds of websites well there is another kind called dynamic websites what is the difference between static and dynamic websites well static means everyone visiting the website will see the same page regardless of the user or location or whatever you know it, it will mostly be html pages with you know some javascript and css and they are usually simple websites on the other hand dynamic website can be of any complexity it can be as simple as having the ability for the users to upload files or it can be as complicated as youtube for example so most of the websites that you deal with when you have to log in they are dynamic websites this here is my uh, blog it's a static website it doesn't have any dynamic content it's just simple static html and javascript and some css website simply speaking static websites are simple html documents whereas dynamic websites will have much more complex functionalities behind them if i were to give an example in the case of a static website all the web server has to do is serve the pages and any rendering or any kind of logic if any is handled on the client side or on the browser side 
Whereas on the dynamic side, there are code or programs that are executing stuff on the server side. It could be uploading a file, it could be reading something from the database, it could it could be updating something on the database, it could be sending an email, a lot of things. So for our video series, we're gonna start with a static website which will have a simple HTML document or simple HTML file and then we're gonna move on to dynamic websites. So Nginx, it usually runs as a service which begs the question, what is a service? A service is a software that provides a service and it listens for requests from the clients. If the service runs in the background, it's usually called a daemon. Now remember, not all services are daemons and not all daemons are services. Now let's go back to our server and install our Nginx web server. If you remember from the previous session, we use apt-get to install packages. apt-get install Nginx. And done. Now Nginx is installed. As I said before, Nginx is a service and now we need to learn about how to manage these services. We need to be able to see the services. We need to be able to start them, stop them, enable them, disable them, etc. Now the next step is to learn how to do all of that. To manage our services, we use something called system CTL. So system CTL controls the system D, system and service manager. Now there's a lot to talk about system D and uh, service manager i don't think we have enough time to talk about that but you should do that as an exercise so you can start with run levels in linux and then you can learn or read about in it in it was the service manager or process manager system d is replacing now you should understand what in it did and what system d is doing differently so in it versus system d this is not like you know 100 percent needed at this moment but it's really good to have there's a lot of hate for system d it's interesting you should read about it if you are not aware of it 